Okay, in this video we're going to do some slightly more advanced things, such as creating separate parts for nose cones and things like that. If I want to split up this nose, let's assume I'm happy with it how it is, even though it's a pretty simple design. We basically need to split the body into two parts. You could model the body originally to end just here and then add on to it, but quite often it's easier to model it in one go and then split it in part and add the surrounding geometry that you need to connect them later on. So we'll do it that way this time. The easiest way to do that is to make a plane and just like last time we click a plane that's parallel, so the right hand plane in this case and then I'm simply going to drag the arrow until it's where I want the split to be. So I might have my split right at the front of the car here. Hit the tick and that is where I'm going to cut off the nose to have a 3D printed section. Up the top here we have a command called split part. It's pretty straightforward. It wants us to click the part, which is the body. The entity to split with is the plane. And we should get a preview of the line about to appear here. Which I can double check. That's definitely the spot that I want. And we'll notice down here we now have body in two sections. So this one we're going to rename to be front wing. And we might edit the appearance as well just to make it a different color so we don't get confused over that. Okay, we can hide this plane. Okay, so at the moment, yes, we have two parts here, but unless you're going to glue them straight onto each other, it's actually a bit of a problem in how this is going to connect. So a simple way to do this is to have a bit that sticks out on this piece and then a matching bit with a hole on this piece. Quite often easier to put the hole on this bit because we're already printing that. It's easier to connect it, but the CNC machine can't really get at the end of the car to put a hole in here. So we will start a sketch on this end surface and once again we're going to trace using the use tool and I might also have a little center line which I press Q to make a construction line coming down there. Okay, if I go a center point rectangle and I snap that to the middle I can start to have my little um, bit that I'm going to get to stick out. So I might dimension this just for some precision. 5 mils by 20 wide. Sounds good. Okay, so I can do this in two parts. I need to have a bit sticking out of this and a bit being cut away from the other. So I'll do it exactly like this. Firstly, I'll come to this one, and I might have it sticking out 10. I make sure it's on add and it's merging with the body. Actually, 10 looks a little far. We might go 6, otherwise it might be too weak. Okay, so that's only part of the story. If I hide this and show the front wing, there's not actually a matching hole in the same place. So we need to turn our sketch back on. And now we will use that center part of the sketch, go to remove, change the direction, and I believe we did 6 mils. We can hide that sketch, and our front wing now has a matching section of the body, so we're going to slot together perfectly. Just keep in mind with your manufacturing that it's not quite this straightforward to make it because when you machine the car given the fact that it's a round cutter all of these are actually going to have a 3 mil radius on them so it might be a good idea to model that and then make the other part match as well or after it's machined and it turns out like this, you can then come back with a file and try and file it square, but it's very hard to do that on the soft timber without damaging the nose somewhat. 
So you might consider doing this with a slightly different shape just to help it slot together. So what I've shown you is something that works, but it's not necessarily the best way to do it. So keep that in mind. Okay, if you're in the professional class, you might also need to separate the rear wing. In development, the rear wing does have to be timber, so you won't be doing this step. First thing I'm going to do is to draw a sketch on the back, and I'm going to show you a popular way people like to separate the wing. However, it's up to you to read the rules to make sure this is a legal method in terms of the thickness around the canister. I'm going to trace this here so I have a center line and then I'm going to do a three point arc and put the arc just inside I'll make it concentric to make sure it's centered and then I'm just going to draw a line that encompasses everything. The size doesn't really matter, it's this arc that needs to be precise. Okay, we can see our shape is shaded, we can hit the tick. So this is how much we're going to cut off the top. It's going to slip on top of the wing and a little cap over the canister. Next thing we need to do is to select our new shape and make sure we get this little inside part as well. And we're going to do a new shape in this direction and we want to do it far enough that the entire wing is encompassed so maybe for this one about 30 that looks good maybe 28 just to make it a little bit smaller hit the tick and we basically have overlapping the bits that we want to cut now we're going to come up to boolean and this is the most complicated part and we're going to go intersect and for this it wants us to click the new part that we've done plus the body and you can see it's going to leave behind a little cap with the rear wing but the problem is it also deletes the body at the same time so to avoid this we're going to go keep tools that will keep the new cap as well as the body as well as the yellow part we can hit the tick we can see down here we have two new parts that's the yellow part if I hide the body you can see we're left with this so we want to keep this but our version of the body still has the whole wing in place so we need to make sure we're showing the body and we need to make sure we're showing our yellow part and then we're going to go to boolean a second time this time we're going to subtract the tool is this big new block the target is the body and you can see it's going to cut it out when we hit the tick. That means that when we re-show the rear wing, we have a perfect fit between them. So if I hide the body, we can see that goes there. And if I show the body and hide the rear wing, a perfect fit. Just another reminder that everything you machine will have a round edge. So it might be a good idea to come back here. And add a 3mm radius to your parts. Also need to do the same thing by hiding the body on your rear wing. So here and here. And I believe the last one was here. Each of those need to have a 3mm radius to make sure they match. to keep everything nice and snug. Remember this is going to be a very difficult part to 3D print so you might like to consider that when you're doing your design. As always we want to rename any of our proper parts of the car, this one being the rear wing. One final thing that you might be doing is segmenting a part of the car for a wheel or axle support system or maybe a nose cone. So there's one other method that we haven't done yet and that's to make a surface and use that to cut the shape instead of a plane. So using our plane that we set up on the side of the car earlier, we're just going to press N to spin the camera 
And I'm just going to do this very quickly, but say we wanted to cut out a section like this. This doesn't actually need to be a closed shape, so I don't need to join the bottom across or get it even or anything like that. And if I was going to do the cut through the car, I'd destroy it exactly in line where I want it to be. We now extrude the shape, but very importantly, we change it to surface and click our three parts. And we'll change the direction and make sure it's coming far enough through. Finally, we can come up to split part. Click on our car, the entity to split with is this surface. And we can see that we have a new part created with the body. And we can now come back into our assembly and add that piece in in the exact place that we need it.